What is good, all you beautiful people out there? It is your boys, Matt and Mike Divine, the Divine Brothers, the DSG. It is August 26th, and you know, we're doing a Divine Deck pod, episode 14. Pods are coming off of a pretty crazy series uh, against the Mets, where, you know, we thought we were cooked, then we thought we were the shit, then we thought we were cooked again, then we thought we were the shit again. All of that's fun. We're going to go all all over that. We're going to go over, you know, the Cardinals series, the Rays series. But most importantly, I want to say hi to mi hermano, mi amigo, Mike Devine. What's up, baby? How are we doing? Um, excited to uh, to talk some pods and hopefully, uh, you know, start a start off a good week with the with the series that we series is series that we have in co- <laughs> that we have coming up uh, with the Cardinals and the Rays. Um, big time, big time. This is a, uh, you know, less than 30 games left in the season. We're in a position for a playoff spot right now. Uh, D backs just stay winning. So we really Braves keep winning. We really just have to handle our business. Uh, and assuming that we do that, we'll make the playoffs. So big series though. This is going to be this, this St. Louis series is, um, it's a sneaky series, man. I, I feel know. like I feel like uh, no one's take no one really takes the Cardinals that serious as a franchise right now um, because they've kind of fallen off uh, the map, I guess, as a consistent World Series contender. But they're still a good team. Yeah. And you're going to St. Louis. You're playing on the road, back to back four game sets against teams that have been relatively in the playoff mix for the entire season. Um, this is a uh, this is a series that you got to keep uh, keep your head on and you know, stay focused, or if you fuck it up, we could be in bad shape, so. Yeah, I mean, Mike, good, uh, pretty much spot on where I was going to say, I think the playoffs start today, and you got to just start winning. You got to look at every series as a playoff game, and you got to win every series. Uh, You're playing a four-game set against a Cardinals team that is pretty much out of it, not saying they're completely out of it, but they got to go on an absolute tear to kind of get back into it. I think they're five games behind the Braves right now, who are three games behind us. They got to go on a tear. The only way they can even come back or even close to it is the series that they're playing us right now. You're facing Mike Schilt's former team, the team that kind of screwed Mike Schilt, to be completely honest. He won't admit it, uh, you know, on record, but they kind of fucked Mike Schilt. He he moved his way up. He worked his way up through the organization, was consistently making the playoffs for the Cardinals, and then he got absolutely cooked. He got fired, obviously comes to San Diego as an assistant. Now he's our manager. I think it's his first time back as the manager of the Padres or as a manager of any other team into where he kind of is from. I'm going to be honest. I bet you the fellas have are playing with a little chip on their shoulder today. I think they're like, hey, this organization kind of screwed our guy Schilt. They, the Schilt daddy, as we call him. Um, I think the boys are going to come out. They're going to play hard. Um, and yeah, man, I mean, dude, this is – it's August 26th right now, bro. A month from now, we're going to, you know, be in the the week of what we're calling most likely the the entire season is going to come down to that last week if we keep playing the same baseball that we're playing right now. Um, you're right about the D-backs winning. The Dodgers keep winning, right? Is it unfortunate that the two teams that we're directly competing against are probably the two of the four other teams in baseball that have been playing as good as the Padres? That is unfortunate, but it's out of our control, guys. When it's out of your control, all you got to do is root for your team. Everything else will fall into place. The San Diego Padres currently have a three-game lead on the sixth spot in the uh, the sixth spot, which is the sixth wild card spot. And then I think we're five and a half games above the Mets right now. I would say, gun to my head, there's four teams that could take the three spots right now. I'm going to say the Dodgers win the division. I'm going to say D-backs, Padres. Car- or no, D-backs, Padres, Braves, and Mets, right? One of those teams is going to be the odd man out. That game yesterday, Jackson Merrill hitting that fucking home run, Profar hitting that home run, makes this conversation a lot chiller than it would have been if we had this conversation. Mike, yeah. honest perspective, uh, how'd you feel? We let, Let's just, you know, tell everybody at home. We're, we're, we're driving back from Tahoe. We're in a bunch of traffic. You know, we, we give up that homer to Janie Martinez. We give up the homer to Mark Vientos. I'm like... Shit, bro. That sucks. Then that inning comes, I think it's the bot- bottom seven. David Peralta's up with runners on first and third. And he rips what we thought was a double. They mm-hmm. call it foul. Next pitch, rips another double to the first base side. Call it foul. I'm like, ah, shit. 
Merrill then goes and steals, slides past the base. Lindor tags him. Free Lindor just shows a ton of emotion, which I like. But he was hyped. He's like, hell yeah, we're going to yeah. win this game. Gonna be right as, back as, as he should be in that scenario, man. Yeah. They're fighting for their lives. We overslide a bag. Um, yeah, I'd be hyped I mean, too. he deserved, yeah, absolutely. Uh, sorry, continue. Finish finish the synopsis of the game. I know we're going in right now where we're at. We overslide the bag, I believe. That was in yeah, the yeah, yeah. So inning. pretty much we overslide the bag. Then, you know, eighth inning, uh, Tanner Scott comes in, one, two, three. And I'm just sitting at home. I tweeted, I was like, blooping a blast. Mudcast. Mudcat always says it, but it's true. Two run lead. This team, all they've done all year is come back, high leverage spots. Mason McCoy down 0 2 in the count against Jose Budo, who is their best reliever, pretty much, other than Edwin Diaz, I guess, this entire season. Budo's pitching 0 2 to Mason McCoy. Mason McCoy, obviously, is this, you know, career AAA guy. This is like his first kind of second time in the bigs. I, I guess he played for the Blue Jays for a little bit, but it's not really a big major leaguer. And he puts up one of the best debuts of the season. Works his way from 0-2 to get a walk. And then Profar comes up, man. And what did Profar do? What has he done all season? Servar. Fucking two-run homer, man. Hey, for $1 million, you will never see a season like Jerkson Profar is having for the value of his one-year contract. I'm going to say this right now. I'm not saying any rookie stuff because I don't consider rookie contracts like that. A true free agent signing for $1 million in the production that Jerks and Profar has had for this team is unworldly. Like, you literally can't even put it into terms how valuable this guy is. They're like, oh, you look at all the stats. He's top fucking 10 in every stat. He's making $1 million. $1 million. He's making 13 times less than Eric Hosmer, who has a podcast like us. It's fucking crazy. Pro hits that two-run homer. Robert Suarez comes in. Haven't seen Bobby in three days. Man, you give that guy a little fucking rest. Ain't nobody touching that dude, bro. He was as dominant as I've seen Robert Suarez. And that's saying something because he has a 1.79 ERA this season. When you think that's his most dominant performance and all he's done all year is dominate, nasty. And then we come up. Crony, nine-pitch AB. Not talked about enough in my opinion. Nine pitch AB almost gets on. I'm like, hey, Crone, has Crone been? Crone hasn't been great in the second half. There's no, not, no denying that. But there is something about Jake as a player that I think might not be on the stat sheet. Defensively, you know, as a leader, he walks out, and I, I vividly remember this. He walks out after striking out, and he says something to Merrill. Do I know what he says? I don't know. Do, does he say, hey, hit a fucking home run? Maybe he said that, and that's what happened. But in reality, he says something to Merrill. And Jackson Merrill 2-0 does what he does best, man. The dude continues to come through. I started recording the video. I was like, dude, I got to record this. Because I had, a, I genuinely thought he was going to do it. I wasn't even that surprised. Mike, I've been yapping. I want to hear what your take on, you know, yesterday's game, the entire Mets series, and kind of where we're at heading into this uh, final, you know, 30 games. Yeah. I mean, after yesterday, or after game one in that series, we said it in Tahoe. We said, we just got to split. I thought we were cooked yesterday. Uh, every time I start to doubt the comebacks of this team and the never say quit attitude, they prove me wrong. Yesterday, they didn't look like they had any energy. Profar hits that home run. Um, and then Merrill walks it off again. Two walk off home runs as a rookie, man. Like it's, it's, it's special. What he's doing is special. Um, Mike, he has six, six home runs. Uh, yeah, no, trust on. me. I mean, I, I see, everyone see those stats. I mean, no, the stats that's are an, that's an insane stat. It's an insane stat. I I think what's great is the the arguments between today, at least between us and Pirates fans, based off of you know who's going to win the Rookie of the Year. Is it going to be Jackson Merrill? Is it going to be Paul Skeens? These Pirates fans live in a fucking Lulu land. They live in de- delusional world, bro. It's <laughs> oh. I think I think that uh, Paul Skeens has a better chance of winning the award unanimously than Jackson Merrill even winning the award. Have you seen the betting odds? <laughs> Brother, Vegas controls everything. If Vegas is predicting Merrill's winning the fucking Rookie of the Year, Merrill is going yeah. to win the Rookie of the Year. What world are you living in? You are in a fantasy world. One, Pirates, you're mid as fuck, okay? <laughs> Let's be honest. Your team's fucking mid. We went seven and zero again. Your superstar O'Neill Cruz is moving to the outfield because he's that bad of a shortstop, and it's hey, not we, even hey. like Tatis. It's not even like Tatis because Tatis was actually a fucking star. Okay, O'Neill Cruz hasn't hey, done I mean, shit. I mean, he hasn't done shit. We, 
It's a little hypocritical for us to call How? out Cruz for moving to the How? outfield. Do you, think o, do you think O'Neal Cruz is going to be an all-star center fielder? He's not even an all-star shortstop. Fernando Tatis was the starting all-star shortstop when he was playing yeah. shortstop. Let's yeah. be realistic. Let's be realistic. Mitch Keller, he got that contract mid. He's not that good. Their team is ass. Their team, oh, we have such a bright future ahead. We have a bright now ahead, brother. Okay, and our now <laughs> includes Jackson Merrill. Paul Skeens isn't going to throw more than 140 40 innings this year. Just get over it, okay? I know this is your Super Bowl. I'm talking directly to you, Pirates fans. I know this is your Super Bowl, okay? We're focused on the big cake. Jackson Merrill doesn't give a fuck about this award. We kind of <laughs> do just to fuck you guys over because you're a bunch of losers, okay? That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. You're, you're Jackson Merrill, every stat, MLB is starting to fucking double hand this guy when he's walking through the room, Okay? Just be realistic. MOB's talking him up. Paul Skeens is – hey, Paul Skeens without Livy Dunn? What is he? Paul Skeens without Livy Dunn, Matt. He's 2018 Chris Paddock. No. No, 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 no. 2019 Chris Paddock is an insane Chris cook. Paddock. That's an insane cook. Bro, if you look at Skeens' stats, he's, he's absolutely insane. I know. Uh, I'm fucking, I'm fucking around. Paul Skeens, Paul Skeens is an absolute dog. He's going to win Cy Young's. But he's not. He hasn't pitched that much. Jackson Merrill's yeah. literally carried this team. If, if, Where's if Jackson Mike? Matt? If Jackson Merrill's not on this team, you know where we're at right now. We're neck and neck with the fucking New York Mets. No, Maybe. we're neck and neck with the Giants, bro. Hey, it's it's what he's done for this team is special. I actually don't have any you know ill will towards the Pirates. I like fucking around. But um, <laughs> that one kid kind of pissed me off on Twitter today. He tweeted, he's like. I have to go back to my aerospace engineering classes. Yeah, I was like, like that shut that the fuck up, loser. I don't give a fuck, baby. I was ag business at Cal Poly. Jackson Merrill's going to win. Get over <laughs> it. Go fail your fucking class. <laughs> oh, man. My, my camera's spazzing out because I'm laughing so much. Um, Yeah, dude. I mean, let me see. Got it. Um, I love Jackson Merrill, man. I just think it's like I if you would have told me at the beginning of this year, like this kid would have Mike, we were like, dude, hopefully he doesn't get sent down in the first month, right? <laughs> like we're so you we're so used to these fuckers coming up and sucking where we're like, dude, hopefully he doesn't suck. Hopefully Preller doesn't ship him off at the deadline. This dude is a foundational piece for the next. I think what's gonna happen in all honesty is I think they probably get an extension done for him. Maybe not this summer, but maybe next summer. Or no, this uh, offseason, but next. And it's going to look exactly like Corbin Carroll's. Um, I think he's just – I think he's right up there, to be completely honest. Like, the value that kid brings and having him as a foundational piece, man, you lock up that core, bro. He's a core piece. He's a core member. He, he hypes up Manny, bro. Hey, Manny Machado, Xander Bogarts, these guys are, these guys are vets, bro. They're vets. Yeah. And you need that kind of lifeblood, bro. You need a hungry dog that kind of can come in. Profar playing for another contract. Merrill just fucking gamer trying to make a name for himself. Like you, that's what we were missing last year. We didn't have that last year. We didn't have any dogs last year. This year we have some dogs. You got Michael King and Dylan Cease, who obviously against the Mets, they neither of them pitched the, the greatest game of their life. King, I truly believe, I honestly hand up. I think playoff game. There's no one more confident I am than Michael King. Like, hey, we're playing the Brewers in a wild card series. Give me King on the bump game one. I think he's that good, honestly. Yeah. I think he gets fluked like no one else. Every time he gives up a run, it's some fluke shit. Dylan Cease also. When Dylan Cease is on, no one's touching that motherfucker. Yeah. Martin the Dream. Martin the Dream. Obviously, yesterday, a couple walks. But, dude, Preller's deadline acquisitions have been amazing. We got the Cardinals for four games. Like we said, Mike, hey. Not any days off until the day after Labor Day. We got it. Hey, we got it. We got to just start taking series, man. Hey, I know we we took the series against the Twins. I would love personally, a game starts in about, you know, 15 minutes. I would love personally if we could just get out to a lead like we did when Musgrove was on the bump. Also, we didn't even talk about Joe Musgrove. Mike. Mm -hmm. Wow. Joe Musgrove, since coming off the IL, I don't know what the fuck he put in his ucl but hey something's working knock on wood but he looks like peak musgrove right now and you darvish yeah. is coming off the restrictive list like guys things are working in our favor what we really need is our offense to start cooking and i'm looking at two dudes xander bogarts 
and Jake Cronenworth. Mm. People say Xander's been 270 since All Star break. Hey, man, or since he came off. Hey, I like Xander Bogarts. I think he's a great guy, and he's going to be on our team for a while. I'm begging him to hit with some pop. I know that might just not be his game, and we might be screwed. But the lack of just any sort of extra base hits is really brutal to have when you have him batting three, four, five. And that's not even trying to be rude to Xander. I Like I mentioned, I like Xander. But when you have a guy who's getting paid $30 million a year and batting th- in your four hole or five hole, and he can't hit anything other than a weak fucking single, that's bad. Yeah, man. That's bad. I mean, like, that's really I mean, bad. A, a 370 slug is it's terrible. In, that's, it's insane. That's Tyler Bobby, Wood Jr. Like Tyler Bobby Wood Jr. is fucking batting average is almost at his slug. And listen, here you, you can't convince me he doesn't have power in his bat, dude. 2018. 883 OPS, 522 slug, 2019, 555 slug, 2020, 502, 2021, 493. Then his bat, when he the last season as a Red Sox, started to dip a little bit, 450. Uh, then it's down to 440 last year with us, and now it's down to 370. Yeah, 370 I don't know if really Xander, bad. I don't know if Xander's power is just completely cooked for good. What the deal is. Um I know he, he fucked his shoulder up earlier this year. Maybe he's just saying, hey, I got to just try to get some – him. yeah, maybe he's trying to say, I'm just trying to get some knocks and play defense and then hopefully provide. Because, listen, let's be honest. Would I rather have Xander Bogarts playing with one arm than having a starting infield of Mason McCoy and Tyler Wade at short and second for uh, yeah, the no, playoffs? Of course. Maybe he's like, hey, I'm getting paid this much money. I need to tough it out and play this year. Maybe he comes back next year and he has a little bit more pop. Yet to be determined, but it is a major, major issue for the Padres if he's a sub-12 home run hitter for a full season for the Bro, next 10 bad, years, dude. dude. It's not good, it's, man. It's a problem. Bro, but he's going to be a 15 home run. If he's going to be a 15 home run guy playing second base, bro, and he's making that money, we're, we're the not. The good news, him. Matt, the good news is that that's not something we really have to worry about right now. Yeah. All right. The team is the team's in a good spot. The future is bright. Tatis is coming back. Um, I don't know, man. There's there's going to be some opportunity. There's going to be some wiggle room uh, for the pods. I think, you know, if Kim is out for a long period of time, in my personal opinion, Tatis comes back. You go Tatis and right. You push Xander over to shortstop. You push Crone to second. You play a rise at first, and then you DH Peralta. You got to have the freight train in the lineup, baby. Him and Solano as a platoon DH would be special. Yeah. Um, it's not like Xander. Xander is still a shortstop. Playing base. You can see, you can see Xander when he's fucking throwing from the, the he looks like the most uncomfortable looking second baseman of all yeah, time. He's he begging to go back to shortstop. He's going to be I, back there next year, by the way, but I think that's Kim a different story. Good. I think Kim's coming back after the 10 day. I have a feeling. Um, I think the Padres need to make a move in the lineup and make it within the next series and that move is to switch got to get jackson merrill in in the three hole bro dude i've seen enough this fucking guy is just better than everyone we put in the three hole he's better than crone and he's better than xander bogarts having him bat six he does come up in some big spots so i understand that I know. That's, but, that's the only thing i'd say but what's the what's the deal with a hey, when i see you know I don't know actually, because like it just it just gives the lineup so much more depth when you yeah, have him I hitting agree. sixth. There's no real break when you have him where down do, there, right? Where okay. The game starts in about seven, so we'll probably wrap it up in ten. Mike Devine, you're Mike Schilt. Fernando Tatis Jr. returns September third against the Tigers. What's your lineup? Um righty on the mound. Righty on the mound. Ooh, that's tough. I would go, I would go, uh, hmm. I think I would go a rise. Actually, I would go Profar first, lead off, Merrill second, Tatis third, Machado fourth, Xander fifth, a rise sixth. I'm going off the top of my head right now. I don't know. I think I think if you have a guy like you need to have two contact hitters in the front and the b- bottom of your lineup. If you have a rise hitting sixth, he's going to get on base. He ne- he never strikes out. 
Um, I, I do know. like. I would like to see a rise in a spot with more guy. I he he always puts the ball in play, for better or for worse. Even though sometimes he should just walk, he'll swing at some other fucking shit. But I just, I, dude, I don't. I feel like when Toddy comes back, man, we hey, I'm gonna put it on record right now. If he comes back and he plays eighty to eighty five percent of peak Toddy, I think we're gonna win the World Series. I genuinely do. Because no other team in baseball right now is getting a guy with that much pure skill back. No one in the hunt is getting a guy back like that. Mike, that's an everyday dude. If he's mm-hmm. Merrill, imagine if we had two Merrills in the outfield right now. Defensively, hey, I love David Peralta. Defensively, he's a, he's a tough watch. David, yeah, David is says, just a hitter. He's just a bat. He's a hitter. He's 37, and he's been fucking awesome for us. Same with Solano. Awesome for us. That being said, you put Tatis in the lineup, you put Tatis in the field, the energy that that guy brings, him and Merrill playing together. Because, guys, forget people forget when Tati went on the IL, Merrill was good, but he wasn't household rookie of the year name. Now you have the rookie of the year, and what, in my opinion, is still a top five, top ten and NL MVP candidate every single year playing in the outfield. And Profar, who might win comeback player of the year. That's your outfield. We need Tati to come back. Bro, I'm nothing would make me happier than him coming back and cooking and nothing in the world will make me sadder than if he comes back and doesn't play well or gets hurt again, that will literally ruin me. So guys, I was telling Mike this yesterday in the car and I, I really believe this wherever you're at listening right now, take a moment, look around and just think, okay, it's late August. The pods are in the middle of a fucking hunt. Whatever happens in the next two months of baseball, We'll be remembered for the rest of our lives. Like, you got to get hyped about that, bro. Like, 2021, we collapse, right? 2022, we make the playoffs barely, and then we knock off the Mets who won 100 games, knock off the Dodgers who won 113 games. Like, what do you say? I wouldn't say we didn't make it barely. We won 89 games. Well, I mean, we were a wild card team. We yeah. didn't, we, we kind of limped into the playoffs. Let's be real. Yeah, but, I mean, 89 wins, like, that was that was not barely is all I'm saying. All right. Well, yeah. Well, I I I, I was kind of going with something, but I appreciate you uh, you cutting me off. <laughs> all right, <laughs> keep going, man. Hey, right, I, I just I just want you to be factual. My uh yeah my my take was cooked, but um, Mies, I'll let you uh, I'll let you uh, you know say whatever you want. <laughs> what the fuck are you on, man? No, I was just saying I was I was kind of cooking, and then you fucking like cut me off midway. Then finish your take and cut, chop it up. A hey, chat, a hey, uh, hey, commoners. I apologize for that. Um, let's let Matt. Let's rewind and let Matt jump right. No, back no, 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 no. We're good. I, I mean, no. I honestly kind of forgot where I was going. So now I'm now I'm kind of cooked. Yeah, you just said we barely. You just said we barely made the playoffs. I just had to come in there and say no. Maybe I'm just supporting my guys. 89 wins. I think if we win 89 games this year, we are a safe bet to make the playoffs. I don't think that that's a barely. Yeah, and I agree. The good barely, news is, is that we been the wrong word. We have 28 games left. We have to win what? 16. We have to go 16 and 12 to win 90. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. What's our 16 record? 16 and 12. Now? We're 74 and. 58, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So we got to win 16 games. Hey, that's fucking doable, man. That's doable. Now, in our competition right now, there's a couple teams that, you know, are really heavy in there. I have a question for you to stir up some controversy. I know we're we're Diamondbacks haters, um, but the D-backs do go play the Mets for three games. I know. And then they play the Dodgers for four games. Are we... Rooting the for the D-backs play the D-backs. Dodgers four games. The D-backs play the Mets and then the Did Dodgers back to back this weekend. Four games against the Dodgers this weekend. Three games against the Mets Tuesday through Thursday. Are we rooting? Okay, I'll tell you right now. D-backs versus Mets. We're rooting for the D-backs. If the D-backs sweep the Mets and we win three out of four versus the Cardinals, we're it in. is over. Yeah, it is over. That it becomes a seeding thing. Yeah. Okay. D-backs Dodgers. I don't know. I don't know. Do we do we root for the D-backs to keep it rolling and us to beat the Rays and hope that it's just a neck and neck race at the end between us and the Dodgers for the final week of the season? Us D-backs Dodgers when we have seven games against them all? 
Or do we hope, hey, Dodgers, you got four games. If you sweep these fuckers and we win the games that we need to win, we have the a great possibility at a home playoff wild card series. What is your take? Dude, I well, I honestly had no idea that the Dodgers and D-backs were playing this weekend. That's going to be a fucking banger. Um, four game set. Holy shit. Is that in and LA? They, it it is uh it is at home and then they go play three in SF and three in Houston. Whew. They have All a right. tough well, little hey, stretch D-backs. coming up. We're gonna see, we're gonna see. But they have some devil, they have some devil magic going on. They're gonna they'll probably fucking win eight in a row. Um personally, Mike, and this is like a funny way to say it. I would hope that every game goes into fucking extras and their bullpens are just cooked. But right now against the Mets, hey. Fuck the Mets, dude. Just sweep those pussies. Get them out of there. We don't have to worry about them anymore, honestly. Yeah, I think the okay. D-backs are just a much better baseball team. Um, I also don't see the D-backs necessarily being a team that just, like, chokes it and, like, gets out of contention. So I'd much rather have the Mets just be, like, out of sight, out of mind, and then we only have to focus about, you know, where we'd get seated. Yeah, I'm with you. Listen if- to this Listen to this stretch, Matt, for the, the D-backs. I think... I- our stretch is difficult. I think we have some tough games coming up. Oh, we yeah. play the Astros. We play the Rays. Play the Giants a couple times. Play the Dodgers. Play the D-backs. They go New York Mets, Dodgers, Giants, Astros, Rangers, Brewers for three, Rockies, Brewers for four, three against the Giants, three against us. That's their last month. That's a dude. That's a that tough, is a that's... fucking tough final stretch of the season. That being said. I still want them to win three against the Mets. Wipe those pussies out. I don't want to see any of those. I love Frank the Tank. Outside of that, Mets fans can eat one. I don't really care about them. They're annoying. Uh, I would love nothing more than their team to not make the playoffs. So if the D-backs can handle business, sweep them. After that, I want the D-backs to lose every single game that they play again. Because if... I'll tell you this right now. If it comes down to the end and they go on a, a tough stretch and it's between them and the Mets on making the playoffs, I would much rather have the Mets make the playoffs than the D-backs. One thing, go Mike, that you have to remember. Right now, the D-backs and Padres, there's no tiebreaker. No one has a tiebreaker. The Mets do have the tiebreaker against us. That's one reason why I really want the Mets to just be out of it because, I, God forbid, you know, we got a tough stretch and it comes down to the final game and they tie us up. Like, Yeah, that's fair. That's a good so D backs are an interesting team. I see them win all these games. They got some pop. They got one thing that the pods low key are missing, and that's pop, dude. Gino Suarez, Jock Peterson, even Corbin starting to hit some bombs. The Dodgers are good. I truly think the Dodgers pitching is what's going to be their downfall. Um, I don't know if Glass now is going to come off the IL or not. Fucking Bobby Miller's Bobby Meatballs. Walker Buehler's a shell of himself, and Kershaw hasn't proved anything in the last couple of rounds of playoffs that he can be a playoff pitcher or a playoff ace. Right now, I'm a little bit scared, more scared of the D-backs than I am the fucking Dodgers, bro. Like, if we were to play them in a seven-game series. So, 100%. It's interesting, man. I'm excited to see what happens. What we really need to figure out and what we really need to do, because the game just started, is lock in. We need the pods to beat up on Kyle Gibson and his fucking 86 mile per hour meatballs and, uh, you know, get a dub. If you're watching this at home before we end it, I want to say we have a um, awesome event coming up. It's going to be the DSG. No one asked for this pregame show live at East Village Tavern in Bowl. It's going to be September 6th against the Giants. Uh, First ever live event. We're going to have a bunch of stuff there. You can buy food. You can buy drink. You can... uh, you know, buy t-shirts, Bowl. merch. We got a couple cool special guests that are going to come through. And, um, yeah, dude, just come by, kick it right before Beer Fest, too. So kick it with the boys, go get some beers, and then hopefully the Pods can beat us, Sleepy Bob and the Giants. Mies, anything before we end it? No, sir. Let's go, Pods. Let's lock in. Does None of this matters. None of the combo matters if these guys don't win the games in front of them. So let's go, uh, let's go watch the boys hopefully string together some wins in St. Louis and then uh, watch them go to – Tampa Bay before we connect again next week. Deuces. Thanks for watching. Later.